Hey everyone, welcome back. I am the Electrical Code Coach from electricalexamcoach.com. And this is lesson 9.3 in our video series. In this lesson, we're going to be sizing the overcurrent protective device and the wire in the same question for all of these loads, for continuous and non-continuous. Let's recap very quickly. If the question states that it's terminating to 60, 75, or 90 degree C terminal lugs, you're going to make your selection from that respective column under normal circumstances. With both OCPD and wire sizing, we still have that 125% demand factor for all loads that are expected to run for three or more hours. And we will always select the overcurrent protective device first, and then we'll choose our wire size. And it'll make more sense why we do that once we start sizing services in the next lesson. And once we get into larger amperage questions like a thousand amps or greater, which we'll learn in the lesson after that one. Let's get to it. What size copper conductors and overcurrent protection would you select for a 54 amp load using THHN type wire terminating to 75 degree C terminals? Step one, we're going to find our total connected load. In this case, we have it. It's 54 amps, but we must check for demand factors. Well, they've not mentioned a specific piece of equipment or that it's going to run for three or more hours. So in this case, there are no demand factors. Now, what we're going to do is size our overcurrent protective device first. You always size that first. So we head to our overcurrent protective device table, which is 240.6A for a 54 amp load. We're going to go down and choose the next standard size up. In this case, it's going to be a 60. Now, let's head and size the wire. For that, we're going to head to our primary opacity table. We're going to start on the left-hand side and make sure that we're on the copper side because our question asks for copper. And we're in the 75 degree C column in this case. We're going to slide down and find a wire that covers the known load of 54 amps. And we're going to select a 6 gauge wire on a 60 amp overcurrent device. Let's get to it. What size copper conductor and overcurrent protection would you select for a 62 amp load using THH and wire terminating to 75 degree C terminals? Step one, find our total connected load. In this case, it starts at 62 amps, but we must check for demand factors. With there being no special pieces of equipment mentioned or the fact that it's running for three or more hours, in this case, there are no demand factors. Now, we go ahead and size our overcurrent protective device. We head to our table with a 62 amp known load, and we're going to choose the next size up, which puts it on a 70. Now we can size our wire. For that, we're going to head to our primary opacity table. We're going to be sure to start on the copper side because it's asking for copper. We're in the 75 degree C column. We slide down and find a wire that can cover the known load, and we find out that we're going to have a 6 gauge wire on a 70 amp breaker. Let's get to it. What size copper conductors and overcurrent protection would you select for a 105 amp load using THHN type wire terminating to 75 degree C terminals? Step one, we're going to find the total connected load. Our starting known load is 105 amps, but we must check for demand factors. It doesn't mention a specific type of equipment or for how many hours that it's running. So in this case, there are no demand factors. First thing we're going to do is size our overcurrent protective device. For that, we head to table 240.6a and choose the next standard size up. And this is why it's very important for you to always go to the table and not just go off of memory or what you might do out in the field. Because out in the field, you might say, oh, this needs to be on a 125 because 125 is a common number. But how many of you know that there's actually a 110 amp breaker in between 100 and 125? I've seen them, I've worked with them out in the field, but they're not very common. Usually out in the field, we'll jump from a 100 to a 125 for like sub-panel sizing. But you have to be careful here. Always go to the table because the correct answer for this question is actually a 110 amp breaker. Now let's size the wire. For that, we head to our primary opacity table. The known load's 105 amps. We're on the copper side of the table because that's what the question said. We're in the 75 degree C column and we go down and find a wire that covers the known load, 105 amps, and we're gonna end up with a number two wire on 110 amp breaker. Great job. 
What size copper conductors and overcurrent protection would you select for a 105 amp load expected to run for three or more hours using THHN type wire terminating to 75 degree C terminals? Step one, find the total connected load. 105 amps is our starting known load, but we must check for demand factors. When we look, we find that we have the 125% continuous load rule. So we do our math. We take our original starting known load we multiply it by 1.25. That gives us a new known load of 131 amps. And now we can size our overcurrent protective device. We head to table 240.6a and we choose the next standard size, which is a 150. Now we can come back and size the wire. We head to our impacity table. We're on the copper side, 75 degrees C column. We're gonna go down and we're gonna find a wire that covers the known load and we're good to go. We're going to select a 1-0 on 150. Let's get to it. What size copper conductors and overcurrent protection would you select for a 50 amp load expected to run for three or more hours using THHN type wire terminating to 75 degree C terminals? Step one, we're going to find the total connected load. Our starting known load is 50 amps, but we must check for demand factors. We see that it's a continuous load, so we're gonna have our 125% rule. We take our starting known load, multiply it by 1.25, and that gives us a new known load of 62.5. Now we can size our overcurrent protective device. We head to our table, we choose the next standard size, which in this case is going to be a 70. Now let's size our wire. Heading to our primary opacity table, we're gonna be on the copper side of the table in the 75 degree C column, and we find a wire that meets or exceeds the known load. When we do, we find that it needs to be a six gauge wire on a 70 amp breaker. Great job. This is end of lesson 9.3. You can head over to electricalexamcoach.com to check out our pro version. I am the electrical code coach and my bargain is that these videos will add value to you and you will in turn go out and add value to others. Let's get to it.